Good morning, everyone. My name is Bruce Campbell. I'm the Executive Director of the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives. With me uh, are two CCPA economists, David McDonald and Armin Yalnizian. We're here to launch the 2012 Alternative Federal Budget. Our partners in Quebec, the Institut de Recherche et Information um, Socioeconomique, IRIS, uh, are simultaneously launching uh, this uh, alternative budget in Quebec. The coming government budget, if the advance billing is accurate, could fundamentally change the direction of the country. We're hearing from senior cabinet ministers that it's talking about a cultural shift. And that could make this year's budget the most significant since the 95 Martin budget. An austerity budget would not only threaten Canada's economic recovery, it would be offside from what mainstream Canada considers its priorities, job creation, reducing inequality, and ensuring public services such as health care and education are there for all. Every year, we table an alternative budget, and this is important. It's in collaboration with a wide range of civil society organizations. We lay out a credible fiscal plan that restores fiscal balance as the economy recovers, creates jobs, protects the environment, reduces income inequality, and maintains vital public services that Canadians rely upon. Our budget reflects the concerns and priorities of the vast majority of Canadians who have expressed no taste for, alternative, uh, for austerity budgets, and we offer it as a budget for the rest of us. David? Thanks, Bruce. Canada's job market remains stalled and Canadians are understandably anxious about their future and increasingly question whether their children and their grandchildren will do as well as they did. In fact, the latest job numbers have revealed that thousands of Canadians have simply given up looking for a job. Compound that with the federal government's decision to close youth employment centres at a time of record high youth unemployment, and we have a real challenge to the economy. Stagnant wages for most of us have meant that household debt has mushroomed, standing in for the wages that Canadians used to get. It is worth noting that the Bank of Canada Governor Mark Carney has noted that this is the most important domestic threat to our economy. At the same time, corporate Canada is only building their corporate cash stash from a decade of tax cuts and failing to hold up their end of the bargain and invest that money in Canada. Many Canadians don't know when they'll retire. And at the same time, the federal government is changing the rules on public pension systems while never saying a peep about it in the previous election. It's no wonder that the majority of Canadians still believe that we are in recession. And many don't like the direction that the country is headed in. And this is the price that we are paying for higher income inequality as the affluent take a larger and larger piece of the collective pie. This is an issue that hasn't gone away, and it won't go away, even if economic growth resumes. It's a problem in search of government leadership. But there's little indication that the federal government is listening. In fact, it has been dodging these issues and warns of four to eight billion dollars in service cuts with very few details. So we're calling on the government to deliver a transparent budget, not a hide-and-seek one, one that protects the services that Canadians rely on, but also builds them in key areas. So instead of more service cuts, prisons, and corporate tax cuts, the alternative federal budget delivers a fully costed macroeconomic package that's built for implementation. In fact, the plan creates over 300,000 jobs at its peak. It provides a real boost to the economy, reduces inequality, and is the antidote to corporate hoarding by dramatically improving key services. In short, we deliver a budget for the rest of us. For the details, let me turn to Armin. Thanks, David. 
This week, the Bank of Canada was the latest voice sounding a warning that economic growth is leaving too many people behind. And that government, governments need to step up to the plate if free markets are going to stop being dysfunctional. It comes on the heels of similar cautions in the last year from the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, the OECD, the Conference Board of Canada. In short, voices from across the political spectrum have been sounding the warning. Now, there is a conspicuous absence in this rising chorus of concern. The whole world may be talking about the problem of rising income inequality since last fall, but our federal government remains silent. Canada's middle class is in a slump. Young people are having a huge struggle to start their lives. The very legitimate concerns about environmental degradation are being brushed aside in the rush to sell off our natural resources. Aging infrastructure is crumbling all around us as our governments kick the problems down the road, which simply causes costs to multiply. That is not prudence. That is irresponsibility. Government neglect of these key issues, combined with this curious focus on imprisonment and building military strength, is delivering a political agenda that is increasingly out of step with the issues facing most Canadians. The alternative federal budget offers a blueprint to tackle these very problems and get to a balanced budget. We show that investment in the things that made Canada the 10th largest economy in the world and a land of promise for our people. Those same investments are within reach today and will ensure that Canada does not become a resource-driven economic backwater. We channel resources into the programs and infrastructure that benefit all Canadians, lead to innovation, and still get to zero deficits, just a year after the federal government itself has said they would reach that goal. And here's how we do it. First of all, we all know we need to fix the aging infrastructure in our cities and communities. The alternative federal budget launches a focused 10-year fix-it strategy to repair the public infrastructure our communities and businesses rely on day in, day out. Instead of ignoring the plight of one and a half million unemployed Canadians and discouraged workers, we put Canadians back to work. We lower the unemployment rate to below 6% with our investments, restoring purchasing power and setting the foundation for sustained recovery for all. The alternative federal budget tackles poverty and inequality head on through programs that emphasize education, affordable housing, public pensions, universal pharmacare, and a national child care program, exactly where Canadians have been saying they want to see greater investment. Our plan calls on those who did so very well before the recession hit and who have bounced back so quickly since the crisis to help make recovery a reality for everyone and help us build a platform for future growth. We end the failed experiment of corporate tax cuts, which has been rewarded with a drop in business investment and fewer middle class jobs for Canadians. Canadians want our governments to get real and join in the effort to become environmental leaders. A carbon tax could help us get there. So with money and a plan, we could transform Canada from an international laggard on the environmental scene to an environmental leader with a forward looking green strategy that would make Canadians proud mm -hmm. everywhere. It's time our governments harness the many strengths of our current economy to ensure this country remains a thriving place to live, to work, to create for the future, making Canada a force that contributes to the world's future. The alternative federal budget shows us how. Any party that wants to put the priorities of mainstream Canada first and foremost and deal with the real tough issues of our era would implement a budget that looks like this. Equality, transparency, service to Canada, that, ladies and gentlemen, is a budget for the rest of us. Thank you. Merci, Armin. Au lieu des compressions, des nouvelles prisons et des coupures d'impôts pour les entreprises, l'alternative budgétaire pour le gouvernement fédéral publie un budget aujourd'hui pour tous et tous. Il offre la réponse à la stagnation de l'économie et aux liquidités inutiliser des entreprises tout en améliorant les services publics. Des politiques d'austérité et un taux de chômage plus élevé ne sont pas indispensables pour établir l'équilibre budgétaire. Le budget alternatif montre que nous pouvons investir dans des programmes publics, créer des emplois et reconstruire notre infrastructure 
pour le bénéfice de tous et toutes et encore équilibrer les livres. Merci.